Welcome, welcome to our Sunday worship service online. This is Pastor Brian, and it is a joy uh, to be able to worship with you, pray with you, and now study God's Word together. What a joy it is. Uh, before we start, I want to remind you uh, that if you're part of Chapel of Change, we are preparing for our resurrection offering. This is our annual special offering where we challenge the church to give double of their normal one-time giving and to give it on Easter weekend. Now, I'm super excited because this resurrection offering is going to help our youth ministry. We are uh, relaunched our, our youth ministry and we're expanding it. We're teaching youth at our Sunday 1130 and our Sunday 5 p.m. And we want to be able to have service, youth service on every service, including midweek. So I would encourage you, pray about going for the double on our resurrection offering. Now, let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through 18. And if you have not already shared on Facebook, go ahead and take a second to share this uh, teaching so that your family and friends can be touched by it as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through 18. It reads like this. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and elegance, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Now, we are making our way toward Resurrection Sunday, that great and victorious day. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest victory ever established in history. But we cannot rush to get there. We need to go through the cross. And today in our study, I want to remind us of the testimony of the cross. That's going to be the focus of our study today, the testimony of the cross. Now, every believer has a testimony. What you were before Jesus came to your life and what you are today because you let Jesus into your life. Every believer has a testimony. What your life was like before Jesus came into your life and what your life is like now today because you let Jesus into your life. People sometimes won't appreciate who you are today until they get a glimpse of who you were yesterday. Sometimes people don't understand why you praise because they don't understand your pain. Every believer has a BC and everybody has an AC, before Christ and after Christ. And some won't appreciate uh, my AC until they get a glimpse of my BC. Now, the cross has a testimony too. The cross has a BC and an AC. People don't understand the cross today because they don't, they don't understand or they don't know what the cross used to mean before Jesus Christ. Now, the cross today represents something different than what it originally represented. The cross today represents the power of God. That's what 1 Corinthians 1.18 says. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us uh, who are being saved, it is the power of God. The cross today represents the victory of God. Colossians 2.15 says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, Jesus made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now, what's fascinating to me is the cross didn't always have this good testimony. The cross didn't always belong to God. The cross didn't always belong to the church. The cross hasn't always meant what it means today. At one time, uh, 
friends, the cross was the weapon of the devil. At one time, the cross belonged to the kingdom of darkness. At one time, the cross struck fear in the hearts of the people of God. So the big idea for our study this morning, friends, is that the cross is the ultimate example of God changing bad into good. That's our big idea. That's what I'm going to kind of break down and paint the picture for us this morning in our study. That the cross is, is the ultimate example of God changing bad into good. Now, to understand the power of the cross today, we must understand how people uh, in Jesus' day viewed the cross. How did the first century Jewish people view the cross? What emotions uh, did the cross steer up in people? What was the original meaning of the cross? Now remember, the cross has a testimony. So let's reflect. Let's reflect on the meaning of the cross before Jesus. Now if you remember, the Roman Empire was the nation that dominated the known world in Jesus' days. And the Roman Empire was an agent of Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Just like Satan used the serpent in the Garden of Eden, Satan also used the Roman Empire to do his bidding. And at one time, um, at one time, there were many ways uh, to inflict suffering on a criminal. There were many ways that the Roman government would inflict suffering on a criminal. Some methods of ex execution included beheading, strangling. Some uh, methods of execution involved uh, burying people alive, drowning, or uh, death by beast. So the Roman Empire would feed people to lions. But they also had what they call crucifixion by cross crucifixion by cross and the Roman Empire chose crucifixion by cross as their choice of capital punishment they chose crucifixion by cross uh, because it was a long and drawn out death they would whip you with leather, leather straps that had glass uh, kind of embedded on it. They would beat you. Uh, they would nail you to a cross and you would suffocate uh, to death. And sometimes while on the cross, you would be eaten uh, by vultures. Sometimes you would be on the cross and you'll cry out for days while everyone was just watching you. The crucifixion, the cross was a horrific and brutal and gruesome death. The Romans they mastered uh, crucifixion to maximize suffering and to send a horrific message uh, to the population. The Romans would often litter their streets with rebels hanging on the cross. One time, uh, history teaches uh, that the Romans littered the streets with a thousand people hanging on crosses. And it was, it was to make a, give a horrific statement uh, to the community. Some of the historians and the writers of the Roman time, they, they spoke about the cross in horrific detail. For example, Cicero, a first century Roman politician said uh, the cross was the most cruel and, and, and horrifying penalty. Josephus, a historian, said uh, the cross was the most pitiful death. Origen, an early church father, said the cross was the most shameful form of death. The, the Roman Empire initially had its own meaning for the cross. Most people don't know the original meaning of the cross. The cross... Uh, sent a horrific message uh, to the people. There was a, a social meaning to the cross that the Roman Empire said through the cross that you are nothing and the Roman citizens are superior to you. There was a political meaning to the cross where uh, it meant that your nation was nothing and the Roman Empire was superior. The Roman Empire even had a theological meaning to the cross. It meant that Caesar was the son of God and above every God. 
And this was the public message of the cross that the Roman government sent to everybody as they seen people uh, dying on the cross. The original message of the cross was to strike fear in the hearts of the people of God. It was the enemy's kind of uh, way of uh, inflicting horrible pain, both emotionally and even physically. Now remember, the Roman Empire was the agent of Satan. Just like Satan used the, uh, the serpent in the Garden of Eden to do his bidding, so Satan used the Roman Empire to do his bidding. So in effect, we could say that originally the cross, the crucifixion, was the weapon of Satan. Originally, the cross was the weapon of the devil. Satan used the cross to intimidate God's people. Satan always uses intimidation on God's people. The cross was horrifying to God's people in the Bible days. It was so shameful that no one would ever publicly mention the cross. It caused nightmares in kids. The sight of someone hanging on the cross would cause people to vomit on the street. Um, the people of God despised the cross. And no doubt, Jesus as a little kid grew up in the shadow of the cross. It was a, it was a horrific thing. It, was, it sent a horrific message, the, the original meaning of the cross. So now I ask you, I ask you, if the cross had a terrible meaning uh, in Jesus' day, how is it that the Bible speaks of the cross in different terms? How, how did the meaning and the purpose of the cross change? Now follow along. The cross originally was the, the weapon of Satan. The cross was originally the weapon of the Roman Empire. The cross was originally a symbol of shame and disgrace. The cross was originally uh, brought pain and hurt to people. But something happened to the cross because the Bible defines the cross in a different way. The Bible defines the cross in a different way. Think about it. Think about it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.18 that the cross is the power of God. The Bible says in Colossians 1.20 that the cross is the symbol of peace. The Bible says in Colossians 2.15 that the cross represents God's victory. How is it that Apostle Paul, a Jewish man who grew up in the shadow of the cross, says in Galatians 6.14 that I brag in the cross? What? What happened to change the original meaning of the cross? How did the original meaning change? Think about it. What happened? How did it change? How did it change? You know what happened? You know what happened to the cross? I'll tell you what happened. Jesus happened. Jesus happened to the cross. Satan put Jesus on the cross. And I want to suggest to you that Satan made a mistake by putting Jesus on the cross. God had a, had a master plan to redeem mankind. And it involved Jesus hanging on the cross in our place. Get this. Jesus hanging on the cross changed the meaning and the purpose of the cross. Jesus hanging on the cross changed the meaning and the purpose of the cross. And if the devil would have known that, he would not have sent Jesus to the cross. And even the Bible says that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, none of the rulers of this age knew this wisdom, because if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If Satan knew hanging Jesus on the cross would change the meaning and the purpose of the cross, he would not have done it. The devil fell for the plan of the Father. God 
always has a plan. Remember that. God always has a plan. The devil may have a scheme, but God has a plan. The devil may have a scheme, but God always has a plan. Even though you may not see it, even though you may not feel it, God always has a plan. You see, the devil, Satan, did not realize that Jesus changes everything. I said Jesus changes everything. The original uh, purpose of the cross was to inflict pain, and now it's a symbol of peace. The original meaning of the cross was to bring fear, but now it brings faith. The original uh, effect of the cross was to cause sorrow, but now it brings joy and it brings healing. Whenever you involve Jesus in something, he changes things. He rearranges things. He restores things. Like Jesus did the cross, Jesus changes the purpose of our lives if we let him in. Like Jesus did the cross, Jesus changes the meaning of our lives if we let him in. Like Jesus did the cross, Jesus changes the way people view our lives if we let him in. Jesus changes everything. Jesus changes everything. Listen, beloved, the cross is the ultimate example of God changing bad into good. As we move forward to Resurrection Sunday and what it means for Jesus to live and to die and to resurrect from the grave, remember this, that the cross stands as the ultimate example of God changing bad into good. This theme of God turning bad into good runs all throughout the Bible. Joseph in the Old Testament testifies in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. God's been changing bad into good ever since we know about him. Apostle Paul testifies about this in Romans 8, 28. He says, and we know that all things, uh, uh, we know that in all things, God works together for the good. We know, we know as followers of Jesus, we have an advantage that we know whatever comes into our lives, we have an ace in the hole and it's called the transforming power of God that we know whatever comes into our lives works for our good. Now that doesn't mean it feels good, but you can best believe if you're a follower of Jesus, he's working it out for your good. How do we know? If he did it with the cross, he could do it with us. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12 testifies of this. It says, my dear friends, I want you to know that what has happened to me has helped to spread the good news. He's testifying. He says, what's happened to me, the trials, the incarceration, the affliction, everything that has happened to me it's actually helped to spread the good news. Listen, my brothers and sisters. The cross is the ultimate example of God changing bad into good. And Jesus wants to show that same transforming power in your life if you let him in. If you let him in your life... If you become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, as he did the cross, he will do your life. And I urge you, as we push forward into Resurrection Sunday, surrender your heart to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. Don't wait another day. Allow Jesus in. Allow Jesus into your marriage. Allow Jesus into your home. Allow Jesus into your family. Allow Jesus into your mind. Allow Jesus into your business. Allow Jesus into your school. Allow Jesus in and he will change your bad into good. I want to pray for you, friend. Maybe you're going through a bad time. Maybe you're going through a stressful time. Listen, I want to pray that God strengthen you. 
And I want to pray that you have the courage enough to let Jesus in. Wherever you're watching at, if you're able and you want to respond to God, you want to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to let Jesus into your heart, I want to encourage you to respond. I want to, I want to lead you in a prayer, but I want to encourage you to respond just by lifting up your hand towards that monitor. Lift up your hand towards that monitor, wherever you're watching this from. Just If you're in the car, just lift your hands up. When we lift up our hands, it's a sign of surrender. I let Jesus into my life some 30 years ago, and he transformed my bad into good. And if he did it for me, he could do it for you. Lift up your hands in response to the grace of God. If you're watching me and you want to surrender your life to the Lord, just bow your heart and say this prayer with me. Lord God, I am sorry. I messed up. Please forgive me. Today, I repent for my sins and I surrender my heart to you. Today, I turn to you, Lord. Help me to follow you. Help me to serve you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Friend, if you said that prayer, listen, the Bible teaches that the angels are rejoicing in heaven because now you have let Jesus into your heart. And I want to encourage you to get connected with us as a church. Your next step is to follow Jesus. Listen, this is not the end. This is just the beginning of your journey of transformation. I want to encourage you to join us if you're able in person. Join one of our small groups. Join us on a Sunday. Join us on Saturday. Worship the Lord with us. Let, let's serve the Lord together. We praise the Lord uh, that you surrendered to the Lord. Now, for those that you're watching, that you're part of Chapel of Change, or you're just one of our friends and you've been blessed by this ministry, we're going to transition to prepare to uh, give an offering of our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. If you want to give to the Lord today, I want to challenge you to give your best gift unto the Lord. Let's give a sacrifice unto the Lord. And always remember, we don't give out of obligation. We give out of gratitude and appreciation. We give out of the appreciation of our heart for what God has done for us. As you prepare to give, I want to let you know there's different ways you can give. You can give online at chapelofchange.org. Go to the website, hit the giving button, and then uh, you can follow the instructions there. You can give in person. Come to any one of our services, Saturday night in Whittier, Sunday 9 a.m. Carson, 930 Paramount, 1130 Paramount, 5 p.m. Carson. You can give in person. You can mail your gift uh, to... 6701 Alondra Boulevard, Paramount, California, 90723. That's 6701 Alondra Boulevard, Paramount, California, 90723. I want to thank you in advance for your investment in the kingdom of God. Know that every investment you make into Chapel of Change is an investment into advancing the kingdom of God. A couple of announcements to make before we close out in a blessing. If you're part of Chapel of Change, don't forget our special resurrection offering Easter weekend. We are giving double of our normal offering. We're giving in honor of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, and this offering is going towards our youth ministry to expand it, empower it. And you can be a part in youth being taught about Jesus. So prepare and pray about that offering. Also, don't forget that our uh, resurrection gatherings and worship gatherings are coming up pretty fast. We're starting with Palm Sunday. Make sure you come out. We're having a special kids presentation. Also, uh, we have Good Friday, two services on Good Friday outside, 6.45 p.m., 8 p.m. in Carson. And then we're having Easter on Saturday in the city of Whittier. We're going to have Egg Hunt for Kids special presentation. Come on out. And then on Resurrection Sunday, we're kicking it off with a 6 a.m. in-person uh, outdoor service, sunrise service. So come out 6 a.m., then 9 a.m. Carson, 9.30 Paramount, 10 a.m. online, and 5 p.m. Uh, in the city of Carson. We're going to have a powerful time, Resurrection Weekend. And don't forget... 
to download our phone app to stay connected with us. It has all our latest teachings and videos and articles. Go to our website, chapelofchange.org. On the front page, it'll give you instructions on how to download uh, our phone app. Now, it's my honor and privilege uh, to dismiss with a blessing. This is our tradition. We want to bless you for worshiping the Lord, uh, praying, and even studying God's word with us. So if you're able, lift up your hands unto the Lord, and we will bless you out. In the name of the Father who loves you with an endless love, in the name of the Son who died that you could live, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who changes your bad into good, may you go this week with the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. This is Pastor Brian. Hope to see you in person one day. May the Lord be with you.